Hi everybody, this is Aaron Conaway with aconaway.com doing a guest video contribution for my buddy Josh at techvblog.com hopefully get some ammunition for this site, it should be pretty good, I'm, I'm expecting good things from it but I've been studying spanning tree as of late in preparation for my switch test so I diagrammed out six switches all connected together and I wanted to calculate what the root bridge was what the root ports of each switch were what the designated ports for each segment were and the block ports for each loop were. So let's get started. So first thing we do is figure out the path cost for each segment. Now a segment is links between switches, right? So there's one, there's one, there's one, there's one, right? So all these lines basically are segments. I guess that comes from back in the day when we talked about bridges instead of switches, which technically a switch is a a switch is a bridge with a bunch of interfaces so it's still valid but in, anyway I digress so the path costs for each segment are actually hard-coded into spanning tree I don't think you can change them somebody tell me if you can change them I don't think you can but for example fast ethernet has a path cost of 19 giggy has a path cost of 4 and there are a bunch of others you can look up on the internet I don't know any more off the top of my head I had to look them up um, before our diagram here, we've only got Giggy and Fasty, so let's go ahead and add the path cost on here. Now, why do we need the path cost? Well, we're going to use that to calculate basically the cost of paths through the network, and that you'll see what I'm talking about later. So, next thing we need to do is figure out what the root bridge is. Now, the root bridge is the switch on your network that has the lowest bridge ID. Now, the bridge ID is the priority and the MAC address the switch concatenated together. Now if you look carefully all these have the same priority of 32768. That's the default priority on Cisco Catalyst switches and so it's all a wash. So though it's though we're comparing bridge IDs in my mind I think of it as priority and then MAC address. I think of it as two things. But it's technically one field in the frame. Okay so if you look look through switch A has a uh, MAC address of o -O 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 A and there's switch B is B, switch C. Now switch E down here has a MAC address of 3. How did that happen? Well that was really a typo, but I'd already published it to my own blog bef and got responses before I could correct it, so it was too late. So I just kept it like that. So the lowest bridge, lowest switch with switch bridge ID on the network here is actually switch E. So we'll go ahead and put that on the diagram here. So we'll circle it in green. That's a nice pretty color. Anyway. So the next thing we need to do is figure out what the root ports are. Now the root ports are ports. Well, a root port is a port on a switch that has the lowest path cost to the root bridge. For example, switch D here is directly connected to switch E over a gig E. So that whole path has a cost of four. So that's the root port. Switch C, it has several paths, right? It can go this way, it can go this way, it can go this way, right? Go, but the shortest path, the least cost path, is actually this way, right? For a whole value of eight. Now look at this, this is interesting. Switch F here it's directly connected to switch E so you'd think it's logical that this port would be the root port but it's not because fast ethernet has a value of a path cost value of 19 and gig E has a path cost value of 4 so 2 times 4 is 8 is less than 19 so this is actually the root bridge uh, root port rather alright so you can do the same calculations use the finger trace method you know here to here what's the value write it down here to here to here to here, write the value down, blah blah, and you can figure them all out. I'm gonna go ahead and put them on there along with the path root path costs, all right? And that's gonna be important when we talk about our designated ports coming up. Now, a designated port is per segment, right? We talked about segments, what they were. Now, a designated port cannot be a root port. Also because a designated port is really the switch port on the segment that has the lowest root path cost that means that every port 
on the root bridge is a designated port, right? Because it always has a value of what? It's a value of zero. So if we look here, uh, for example here, we know that this is the designated port, and we know this is the designated port. Now what about between these two switches? Now that's the root port. It can't be the designated port, right? So there's only one left, so he's the designated port. What about between here and here? Now, neither one of them are root ports, so we go to the spanning tree tiebreakers. Now, spanning tree tiebreakers are, they're in this order. Number one is the switch with the lowest root bridge ID. Now, we should all have the same root bridge ID, right, of switch E down there, right? Now, if, there's, if we don't, there's something else going on that we've got to figure out. The second one is root path cost, right? So which interface on this segment has the lowest root path cost? In this case, switch C has a root path cost of 8 and B has a cost of 12. So C wins. So that means that right here, that is the designated port. Now what about here? It, we don't have any root ports here either. So we all have the same bridge ID, so a root bridge ID, so we'll move on to the next one which is root path cost. Now, ooh, root path, they both have the same root path cost of 12. So what's the third one in the tiebreaker? The third one in the tiebreaker is the bridge ID. So then you can switch A and B, compare bridge IDs, and A, having the lower of the two bridge IDs, will get the designated port. Now there's a fourth tiebreaker, which is port ID. And uh, you see that if you have multiple interfaces between two switches or to the same segment. I tell you, I've never seen it before because usually what you do is you wrap that in, in ether channel, right? And it becomes one logical port to spanning tree. But anyway, I digress. So let's go ahead and put the designated ports on here. So so this one won from the second tie break of root path cost. This one won from the third tie break of bridge ID. Now what's left? The only thing left to do is figure out the block ports. Now that's easy. Which ones aren't root ports and are designated ports? That's the one you block. So I'll go ahead and put those on there. So we have a block port here and here off of switch B and here off of switch F. Now notice there are three really major loops in this network, right? You have the big rectangle in the middle. You have this little triangle. Then you have this little triangle. Right. Notice you have a block port on each of those loops. Is that a coincidence? I think not. The whole point of spanning trees is to get rid of loops, and it has done so. Now, notice this. Remember we talked about this was a root port candidate, but we didn't use it because there's a faster route this way or a lower cost route this way. Notice it winds up being blocked, even though it's directly connected to the root switch, the root bridge it winds up being blocked because of all the path cost. I, th I found that very interesting. But there you go, we've gone um, from one end to the other, we've figured out what the that switch E is the root bridge, we figured out all the root ports for each switch, we figured out the designated ports for each segment, and we figured out the block ports to keep loops out of our network. Pretty easy, eh? It's not that difficult. Of course it would be difficult if you had like you know 75 switches or something, but in this case, pretty easy.